Am I the idiot for uninviting my girlfriend to Christmas because she wanted to bring her own food? Throw away ACCT. My GF is on here. I, 27M, invited my GF, 27F, of three years to my family Christmas. We've never spent holidays together, she likes to visit her family out of state, and I really wanted her to finally spend a holiday with us. My GF is keto and in recovery from a serious eating disorder, she starved herself and would make herself throw up, and does most of the cooking and I'm okay with that because she's a great cook and always makes tasty dishes and I'm happy to make food she'll eat when I cook. Keto helps her stay on track with her recovery and I understand that but don't see why she can't have the occasional cheat day. She tries to be healthy and tries to avoid preservatives and sugar but sometimes has a dessert with me, but will only eat stuff she's cooked herself because she has to know what the ingredients are. However, my family is very traditional and she definitely isn't. My dad, sister, and I, mom is dead, have a tradition of eating lasagna on Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Day, my family is very traditional with the side dishes and desserts, but like to switch it up and do something interesting every year for the main. This year it's going to be pizza. We love our traditions, x. Grandma always brings the same sweet potato casserole with marshmallows, and usually use traditional recipes, and buy pies from the store for dessert. I have told my GF a lot about our traditions, and she asked if she could bring a few dishes and a dessert, since she can't eat most of the food, but I think she's just being picky, like she says she couldn't eat a green bean casserole from a traditional recipe because it has canned soup in it and she doesn't want to eat anything with too many preservatives. I said no, she shouldn't bring dishes because my family really likes our meal as is and I feel like it would be rude to bring your own food to someone else's event. She doesn't like store-bought pies because they don't taste as good as homemade says they aren't worth the calories which seems nitpicky. I said she should just let go a little and enjoy one special meal that's not part of her diet it's not that big a deal. Then she asked if instead, she could just bring her own separate meal and I said no because that seems even more rude. I told her she should come and eat what she could, and just take some of the dishes she won't eat to not offend my family but she said she couldn't do that because it might be triggering for her to even have that food on her plate. At that point I just straight up uninvited her, because everything she suggested seemed rude, and like she was being difficult, and this would be the first time she's meeting my extended family and it would make a bad impression. She got upset and really hurt, and I think she's just overreacting, but her BFF, Joe, who is also a friend of mine, said I was being harsh and didn't understand how much she might be struggling from her entitled dad. Am I the idiot for uninviting her and telling her she would offend my family and make a bad impression? No, I did not ask my family about her bringing food, they usually don't ask anyone to bring extra stuff for the meal so I assumed they wouldn't like it if she did. The top replies, you are the idiot she should probably uninvited you from her life as you don't seem to be a healthy partner for her. Does original poster want to introduce GF as a person or merely as a side piece? I just don't understand his attitude. He knows GF is in recovery from a serious eating disorder. What's harm in letting the family know that due to GF's dietary constraints that she'll be bringing some dishes to share with everyone? You are the idiot. Edit. So as folks in comments have said, GF, who refers to herself as fiancé, posted her side of the story earlier, and about two weeks ago posted about how she was encouraging him to take a job that he wouldn't because it paid less than hers. Putting all three posts together, original poster is not looking like a great guy. I hope GF, our fiancé, thinks seriously about whether he's worth it. The third reply. I'm in entitled dad recovery and I could actually understand his perspective if he was worried about her still engaging in restrictive slash disordered eating. Part of recovery is learning how to navigate situations where you don't have control over the food. If she is unable to eat anything outside her pre-planned meals even for a special occasion, that's something she still needs to work toward in treatment. The language she's using is classic eating disorder rhetoric, even if she's no longer purging. However, 
she may not be there yet and it seems like he has no interest in understanding where she's coming from or making any compromises or accommodations. He didn't even ask his family if it would be okay to bring something, which is a very normal thing to ask a host of a holiday gathering. I would never show up to my boyfriend's parents' place for a gathering without bringing a dish. Fourth reply. All of it is terrible but not even running it past the family is insane to me. He doesn't even need to mention the entitled dad. If I was hosting family Christmas, and somebody said they were bringing their partner who is keto, so they're going to bring a few dishes to make sure they have food they can eat, my only response would be, oh sure that's fine, but I can also try and adjust some meals so they're keto as well, does she have any favorites? And I know for a fact that my other family members would do so as well. The two options I see here are that original poster's family are a family of Oz, or that original poster is an idiot and applying his honest to his family and his mother would be appalled that her son has been so inflexible so he can force his GF to eat pizza and frozen pies? The second story. Am I the idiot for telling my kid's teacher to stop fishing for information that's none of her business? I'm raising an eight-yo boy who is technically my nephew though we are not biologically related. It's a complicated story. He's been with me since he was five and calls me Uncle Mike. His teacher, Miss L, has been complaining about his behavior. I asked for examples and then asked her if other boys in her class displayed the same behavior because it sounds like typical third-grade boy behavior, i.e. not paying attention, talking too much. We really weren't making any progress until she asked me about Aiden's home life. I thought she was going to ask about his sleeping habits. She said, well meant about his parents. I asked her if this whole thing was an excuse to dig for personal information and if it was, then she was a sorry excuse for a teacher and a human being. She was taken aback by my comment and said she didn't know if there was something she should know about. I told her if she has something to say then say it. Do not waste my time by asking to meet me under false pretenses just so you can fish out why I'm raising my nephew. It's none of her business. She said she'd try again when I was not so emotional and I said try again when you're not so nosy. Today she apologized for everything and said there was no excuse for knowing things that she didn't need to know. She said she wanted to start over. I think she expected me to apologize and I didn't. I told her I don't hold grudges and apology accepted. My brother and his partner adopted Aiden at birth. Both of them are away for a very long time. I wasn't going to let Aiden go into foster care so I took him in. He's doing quite well. The top replies. You are the idiot. The teacher is trying to help your child. Knowing his background can be very helpful and enlightening. She is not trying to fish information. She is trying to understand why your child is acting the way he acts so she can plan her interventions better and make sure she doesn't make things worse by making bad interventions with him stop fighting her. She is not your enemy, she is your ally. Edit. So tired of people saying that the teacher is being nosy. The teacher was trying to get more info in order to do better interventions with the kids. If a kid is having a bad behavior because he is rotten spoiled and his parents are idiots, her interventions will be more stern and punitive. If the kids misbehaved on a Monday, and the teacher knows very well that the kid just spent a traumatic weekend with her abusive parents, then she will use patience and kindness with him. The way you handle an entitled child is not the same way you handle a traumatized child. The second reply. She was concerned about the child and asked about their home life and you snapped back that they are a sorry excuse for a teacher and human being? Definitely you are the idiot. The third reply. Educator here, ninth grade, but still. When I have students displaying behaviors that cause class disruption or disruption to their own learning, I 100% ask parents about tendencies slash behaviors at home. This helps me to understand why the student is acting out. I respond slash handle it differently depending on the reason. A student who is acting out because they have a diagnosis they're learning to live with needs different interventions than a student who came to school hyper because they're hopped up on donuts and monsters, 
who needs different intervention than the student who is acting out due to maybe personal slash family emergency situations. His teacher was not being nosy. She was trying to understand why your nephew acts out so she can help support him, as a person learning to be a person, and his education. Your outburst 100% makes you are the idiot. Third story. Am I the idiot for kicking out my daughter after she kept complaining about our household? I 40F have two children, 18F, Anaya and, 21M, son, Jalen. My son has two children, 5F and 2 Mo son. My son's girlfriend moved in when she was six months pregnant and has been living with us since, due to her family and herself not seeing eye to eye. I live in a two bed so I have my own room, my son has his own and my daughter sleeps on her air mattress in the living room. We have been working on getting a larger place, but for now this was all we could do. From the timeline of my between now and two months prior, I have noticed a change in my daughter's behavior and my son has had several conversations with her regarding so. She will complain that the baby is making too much noise, if they grab something to eat from the kitchen. She will complain about the light, and even when they turn on the oven light instead, she will still complain and talk about the matter for days. She will say that it's bothering her due to it being 2 a.m., but both myself and my son will remind her that if anyone needs to eat at any time then they are more than welcome to do so. I told my daughter that her behavior is disrupting my household, I told her that she should move or find a different place to live especially since she has a job and works five days a week. She got upset and suggested that my son's GF move and began making low blows by saying, this isn't even her family, or that, whatever her and her mother have going on has nothing to do with this and she should go home. I told her that her behavior was unacceptable, I told her that she didn't have to pay her portion of the bill this or next month, but that she needs to leave. The top replies, you are the idiot, if your son is old enough to make babies and play house, then he should get his own place. The fact that you're kicking your childless 18-year-old daughter out who works five days a week and has been sleeping on an air mattress in the living room is ridiculous. If anything, your adult son and his baby mama and their two kids should be in the living room so that he's uncomfortable enough to man up and take care of his family. If your daughter is smart, she will get out and write all of you off. This is the most ludicrous enabling I've ever heard. To punish the child who isn't making poor life decisions for wanting to sleep at 2 a.m. The second reply, you are the idiot. You're making your kid sleep on an air mattress in the living room and allowing people to cook full meals at 2 a.m. and disrupt her sleep? Why does your son and his GF get to do whatever he wants to with zero consideration for the needs of other household members? If your son needs to cook full meals at 2 a.m., Perhaps he and his kids should be sleeping in the living room where they have access to the kitchen and your daughter gets the bedroom. Your preferential treatment towards your son is very obvious. The third reply. The original poster clearly has a favorite child and it's not her daughter. She blames her daughter for disrupting her household and she is busy coddling an irresponsible 21-year-old. She's even talking about getting a bigger place to accommodate him and his kids. She doesn't give a damn about her daughter. The fourth story. My boyfriend tricked me into agreeing on a truesome and now he's pissed. My boyfriend, 24 male, and I, 21F, have been together for almost six months. We have a very active and healthy S. X life. One of our biggest issues is that we both have trust issues. I'm trying to work on mine from a past relationship and he's grown up around everyone cheating. He's constantly assuming I'm cheating and I always have to prove to him that I'm not. About a week ago, he suddenly mentioned the idea of having a truesome with another dude. I instantly shot him down and kept saying no. However, I was curious why he suddenly was bringing this up since he gets extremely jealous when he even thinks about another guy touching me. He kept promising it's a kink of his and everything and that he really wanted to try it. I had no interest in it from the get-go. I require emotional intimacy for S. X to be pleasurable for me. 
He kept begging me to just agree and try it or think about it. He did this from about noon to 10 at night. At some point, I got super uncomfortable and just agreed to do it to get him to leave me alone about it. I expressed to him multiple times throughout the day how uncomfortable the idea was to me. He just would not stop. I was at work for a good portion of the time he kept begging me. When I got off work, he kept talking about it still. I said, this seems like some sort of test, and he went, you 100% failed. After this happened, I was driving us an hour and a half to his grandparents. During this time, he kept switching between yelling at me about me wanting to have s. x with another dude and how he should leave me over it. I keep trying to explain to him how he was making me feel super uncomfortable with the whole idea so I lied just to make him happy. I never once actually planned on having a truesome. It's just not my cup of tea. A couple of days go by and he's acting fine. He sometimes brings it up or mentions how I'm a whore and he should know I want to have s. x with other dudes based on that fact. I've slept with three people. One was a seven year long relationship. During this time, he wants me to talk about my past sexual experiences cause he gets off to it. He said that he actually does have a kink for it but that he would never actually want me to have s. x with another dude. Which I even told him that he wouldn't be okay with it. But then he got upset that I wouldn't talk about my past with him to get him off. Well, today, he absolutely loses his sheet again when he's at work. Accusing me of wanting to have s. x with other dudes, sneaking around and having s. x with other dudes. Telling me that he is only with me because his job is located near where I live. He then tells me he wants to have a truesim with another girl. As I'm writing this, he just texted me calling me a whore again or that he's gonna have someone's sloppy seconds. Another thing that I forgot to mention. This is the same guy that told me he wants a blowjob from another girl, affection from another girl. I also caught him texting other girls and then lying to me about it. I don't know what to do. I love him but he has such bad anger problems and he's making me feel like I'm an awful person. Edit. He has also accused me of wanting to sleep with my dad and that I was skipping classes to meet with dudes. Update. I left him. I realize I've been stupid with allowing someone to treat me this way. I need to be able to focus on myself and not be with someone who is so toxic. Thank you to all the comments, especially the ones calling me stupid and making me realize.